we're going to go to the water coloring in. So again, the idea here is that you are on site trying to get a quick image of something. So you're not going to be thinking too much about layering multiple layers of colors and waters and all those sorts of things. You're just thinking about, I want to remember <laughs> what shade of blue this guy was and what shade I want to make the tree and that sort of thing. So you're thinking quick and easy. So let's see. Let's say, you know, normally I go with that blue that clearly I've used up quite a lot of. Let's say that the sky was a different shade of blue and I really like the shade of blue it is. So let's say that it was more this kind of a shade of blue. So let's pick up some of that. So let's say it was a grayer day. Alright, so see how that's a grayer color? Let me just move my white out of the way. Here we go. Alright, so let's say it was, the sky was this color. And I say, okay. I mix this up so that I remember that it was a grayish kind of day. Now when we compare this with the crayon resist that I did, the crayon resist would automatically resist the paint at these edges. But we are not doing crayon resist right now. All we have is the um, ink down and ink will not resist at all. I could paint right over that ink without any problem. So when you're doing the sketch kind of technique, in general, you are not worried that much about being perfect on the edges because your aim is not to make a perfect drawing for itself. Your aim is to record shapes and to record colors. So it is fine. Well, I mean, it, it's always fine. You're, you're the painter. You can do whatever you want to. But it is especially considered normal when you're sketching to have colors going over the ink or running into each other and so on because the whole idea is that this is a quick casual process to be able to get a starting concept of what a scene looks like. So you're just doing things quick and easy so like you aren't necessarily getting in any, every nook of the tree, you aren't necessarily getting every spot because you're just giving an impression of what the scene is like. So you say, okay, the sky was about this shade of blue. So it gives a sense of the sky being a shade of blue and also not that there aren't any giant fluffy clouds in there that stand out because we have just indicated it as being all a flat grayish color. Alright, make sure we get the sky in this little cut out hole. So again, normally in a traditional watercolor painting I would have taken up a smaller brush to make sure I poked in that hole cleanly, but because we're just sketching it doesn't matter that much. We just want to sense that there's blue in there. We want to sense that there's a little stripe of blue, oh, not, that, not that far down, <laughs> a little stripe of blue in there. All right, do a sense of the tree color. So we want, I think it might be a little too red. Yeah, no, that's okay. All right, so let's say that the tree that we were aiming for is about that color. Paint that in. Again, we're doing this rough and casual, and remember we're doing this quick, so that blue is still wet. If I get this red too close to that blue, they are going to merge together and get to be purple. So on one hand, with regular watercolor painting, one would wait until the blue was dry. But when you're doing the sketch thing, your aim is to get the whole thing done like in 15 minutes. 
And then <laughs> the sketching part probably took me more than 15 minutes just to get the sketching part because I was actually trying to get the lines straight and so on, or straight-ish. <laughs> I will not claim that those are straight. But anyway, if you're trying to get this whole thing, including sketch sketching and painting, done in just 15 minutes, you just go for quick and casual. You're not trying to make a masterpiece here. You're trying to get a sense of the scene because maybe you just stopped on the sides of the road for 10 minutes and you've got 10 minutes to get a quick idea of what it's like before you have to get on and get to school or work or wherever you're heading. So the more important thing for you in that situation is to get a good sense of the colors and to get a general sense of what features of the image drew your attention. All right, so we got some colors. Yeah, let's see. So, let's see, this is where the time starts. They just say, oh, what if you want a little more orange in there? But see, then this becomes an <laughs> hour-long project. And that's generally not what you're not hoping to do when you're sketching. You're trying to go quick. I'm trying to go a little slower so I can talk about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. But that uh, sort of goes against the whole mindset of the sketching. All right, so the house in the background is yellow. I'm going to grab a little yellow. Again, normally in actual watercoloring, I would grab a smaller brush because my end is, aim is to get around all these little window things, but I am just doing a sketch. So I am just giving the sense that there's yellow in there. And I'm trying not to get into that red so that the red doesn't bleed into the house. We're just being quick and casual. Casual and fun and relaxed. All right, the main church is also yellowish, but a very lighter yellow. So we will dilute that out. I think if I pull that out of there, then that'll stop doing that. The idea is, a, again, the idea is just to give a general sense that this has a light yellowish tint to it. You're not worried about getting into the windows or anything else. You're just giving a general sense of what this is up to. Slightly darker yellow down here to remind us that the house is poking through a little. Alright. Yellow up here, a little bit of more because we're going to be yellow. The other thing is that if you are just doing this quick, you also want this to dry quick because then you're probably going to hop back into your car or keep walking down the road or whatever, and you don't have a lot of time for this painting to dry. And if you're walking around with a <laughs> watercolor painting, chances are that it could start dripping or getting pressed against your clothing or all those other kinds of things if you don't happen to have a nice flat car seat to stick this thing on. So you want to go light and quick and give it a little bit of drying time before you head out. So that's another aspect of why you want to go quick and light with this. As much as, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm <laughs> super tempted to go back and fix things, and I can't. That is not the purpose here. The purpose here is to be quick. Put in some gray for the foundation. Alright, next up, roof. The roof is sort of brownish, maybe a little red, nice little spot of red there I can use. There we go, reddish brownish. So the sky hasn't really dried, the church definitely hasn't dried. So again, I'm going to leave white in between because if I touch the two, then they will just run. Oh, I think it was safe. <laughs> I thought it was about to prove my point. That roof, got that roof, got this little roof. Little chimney. Alright, you know, this 
so dangerous because everything is still wet in here. And to show that there's these little ridges without it turning everything else brown, I think I managed to pull that off. Grass. So again, the idea of sketching is that it is not super accurate necessarily. Although if you're able to make it super accurate quickly, that is lovely. That's a good skill to have. The idea is to make it quick and to give you an idea of what the scene is like for use for later purposes. Or it can just be pretty on its own. That's fine too. Alright, so we got a green base. And it might be important to me to remember that there's shadows over on this side. So again, you're just doing quick quick and easy. Now we want there to be a little bit of brown. This will merge in a little with the green because it's all wet, but that's okay. Because the idea here <laughs> is quick and not to obsess too much about a particular part which I will start to do. <laughs> I'm say the roof needs to be darker. You want it to be reasonably close to what you're aiming for so that you remember well, it was this kind of color and that kind of color. So it's worth it to fix the color if you think the color isn't quite right. But other than that, you don't want to be obsessing too much about details in here. Because if you took a picture or two, your pictures will serve as hints on the details. You're just trying to get a feel of it. Alright, the back sides of the steeple were a little darker. We're going to mix together the little bits of yellow and brown we have left. See so now they're going to bleed a little because everything is still wet. But that's alright. Your aim is just to. Give yourself a little bit of a visual reminder hint. Alright. Alright, now here comes one of the other tricky parts. Well, here, wait, let's get these pillars in first. Got these parts here. That part there. Alright, and see, I will put in a little more over here to remind me that this is a little yellower than the church. But you have to resist the urge <laughs> to sit there and futz with things too much because this is not a futzing sketch. It's quick, easy, casual, give a sense of things. Alright, windows are darker. Windows are darker. Windows are in the middle of yellow things. So these are going to run. You just have to accept that. Normally I would mix up a carefully perfect shade of gray. But we are going quick here. So we are going for something that gives a sense of it that is good enough. But I still think that should have a little more blue in it. So there we go. Now, can I drop this in without the entire house turning? Yeah. Ah, there it goes. <laughs> Told you you have to be quick. But also, no, no, no. That's what happens. All right, so on one hand, you can just accept it and say, well, I know what I was after. <laughs> Yellow. Or you can try to fix it a little bit. We'll go with the fix it a little bit technique. Alright, so to fix it, <laughs> what I did is I got the brush clean so it just had water in it and then I dried off the brush just by squeezing with my fingers because that's the quick easy way to do it. And I'm sucking up 
the water so I'm squeezing off the brush so the brush is clean and dry and I am drawing the brush along here which then sucks up the water into the brush so I'm using the brush as a vacuum cleaner in essence so if I spent a lot of time on that I could pull up all of that blue but we're sketching so I just wanted to get a sense more that it was a yellow house dark windows and that's really what matters it doesn't matter how exactly I get into the window frames because we know what window frames are we know how they work we we're just giving a rough idea of the situation now luckily while I was playing with that the church side over here has pretty much dried so I have less danger although there's still a danger there's less danger of the darker of the windows getting sucked out into the lighter of the church wall. Oh, oh, see there it goes. All right, hold on. So clean off the brush in water, clean water, squeeze it with my fingers to get it dry and now when I pull it up like that it sucks the blue off the page. So I'm pulling up a little to vacuum it and then I'm squeezing it with my fingers to get it dry again because I want it dry when I put it down so that it sucks the water up. So see, it is uh, pretty easy to fix that problem, to in essence erase while it is still wet off of the paper. And again, it's a sketch, so it wouldn't really matter if it did that, but just for the uh, sake of this example, I'm trying to show you a number of different techniques you can use, and that's a technique that's useful. So sketch quick, not necessarily accurate, but to give you a general sense of the scene. And often urban sketches are trying to do this whole process from start to finish in 10 to 15 minutes. So we are talking super fast. And it is not necessarily that they are expert sketchers, although some of them certainly are, but the idea is just to set free the worry of being accurate and to have more fun getting the feeling of the scene. And certainly one would think that the more one practices, the more that one can convey accuracy quickly. So if that is your aim, then that is fine. But just in general, uh, be comfortable with the sense that a sketch is a rough idea. See, I'm sitting here actually caring how I paint the windows in, which is more of my mindset, but and, and, and when you're sketching, you're just supposed to be going swish, swish, done. Swish, swish, done. Okay, that you got the gist. All right, so you can see that there's still little white spaces in different areas, and that's okay. The idea of a sketch is not to get every last area painted in. The idea is to be able to give a sense of where the colors and stuff lie. Um, let's look at the regular picture. Alright, we need more shadow on these back walls. A little more shadow in here. More shadow in here. Shadow. Shadow. Also, more of a sense of the that's okay. So, more of a sense of the brick. And remember, this will dry lighter. And when this kind of bleed happens, again, it's okay. The idea is to be quick. Um, right, let me put in the edging here of the bottom. Shadow of the roof. Remember that that is 
dark. Alright, dark shadow of the roof. Alright, we've got the roofs. Got those. Dark inner area of the Alright. So again, if you compare this sketch even to my other sketch, which I put where? Oh, have I already lost my first watercolor sketch? Oh, here it is. Alright, so well, if you look at my first one, I spent more time making sure that the angles were right and that the colors were right and that I did different layers and the lights and the shadows and all that kind of stuff. So I was putting time into trying to be more accurate with this one. With this one here, this is meant to be a rough sketch. So the drawing part with the pen should be quick and um, more on, focused on shapes and feelings than specific things. And then if you want to add color to it, make sure that you use an initial drawing object that will uh, work well with the way that you plan on coloring it. So if you're going to use colored pencils, it's okay because the colored pencils aren't going to run and that sort of thing. So you can draw with initially with pencil or pen or whatever you want. If you're going to use watercolors, which is a common way to do this, then you want to make sure your initial drawing object is water resistant, that the water will not smear all of the pen strokes and make them run. So you can use pencil, which naturally does not smear in that situation, or I used a water resistant pen. And I like the way that that looks. The, the first one that we did, we drew in pencil, and there's one style of uh, the way that it looks for pencil and watercolor, but I really like the way that black pen and watercolor look together, the contrast between the dark and the light. So this is how you would do a sketch. And uh, when I did the sketch, because I was talking about it and explaining some techniques, it took <laughs> longer than 15 minutes. But the idea when you go out and you do a sketch is that it should be a very quick, uh, casual is the wrong word, but uh, loose type of style that you are just giving rough ideas of the shapes of things, the relationship between different areas of the image, and the types of colors that you're going to want to use when or if you decide to do a more long-term painting version of it. All right, so ask if you have any questions about the sketching process and about how all of this sort of stuff works.